So this video is for people who use Ableton Live and are looking for an amazing way to automate their processes. And in fact, it works with any of your DAWs, including Cubase and Logic. So if you're interested in that, let's go. So today I'm gonna to tell you about my secret sauce, which I use with Ableton Live to automate many of the functions that I use as a live music streamer. It's called Bohm MIDI Translator Pro. It's an amazing piece of software. What it does is it takes incoming MIDI information it translates it, changes it into something else, and then sends out that MIDI information back to Ableton. And what it allows you to do is really power up your MIDI triggering or your playing of notes and a number of different things. So let's get right into it. So here we go, this is Bohm MIDI Translator Pro. And there are three main sections that I'm gonna take you through, um, which you can see on the screen now. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is the translator section. Each one of these is a translator. What those translators do, they are the actual kernel that takes the incoming message in, translates it, and sends it back out to your program. On the left-hand side, these are the presets. So each preset can contain many translators. As you can see, as I'm moving through there, I've got loads of different translators. So they're a really helpful organizing tool. So you can have a different preset for doing a number of different functions. So for example, as you can see here, I've got a scene switching presets and I've got a song start preset and I've got keynote functions preset. So notice on each of the presets and each of the translators, there's this little box here that you can tick and untick. So when it's ticked, it means it's active. And when it's unticked, it means it's not active and won't work. So ultimately it turns the translator off. And it also helps you to turn on and off whole presets. So if you untick one of these presets, all of the translators underneath it won't work. So that's really helpful. On the left-hand side over here, you've got, this is actually the property toolbar. It has the translator options. So you can have the name of the translator. That's the name that you see over here. Um, the box of active or not active, that tick box is here as well. So that obviously ultimately makes it be active. There's a, a box here you can tick which says stop processing after executing this translator. That allows you to stop all processing within Bohm once you've triggered this translator. It's helpful if you've got a really complex setup and lots of different things are being triggered. This section is incoming. So what this ultimately does is it defines what incoming message Bohm will receive. So this one's gonna receive a MIDI message but you could also have a keystroke um, or it can be a timer. So you can actually set a timer within Bohm um, to make a, a translator happen after a set period of time. Then there's a bunch of rules you can include. I don't actually use rules. Rules are a little bit complex, so um, uh, you'll need a bit of coding understanding. But you know, for me, I don't actually use them and I'm able to get quite a complex setup already. So you, know, you can get into that if you want to make it even more uh, interesting. And then the final section is outgoing. What this is, is this defines the thing that you're outputting from Bohm. So for example, you can see here, you can output Apple script, execute file, keystroke, MIDI message, mouse, preset, loads of things you can output. So that's Bohm and how it's set up, but ultimately I think to really get your head around how it works, let me dive straight into an example. So for this example, I've brought up Ableton. So you can see here on this track here, I've got my keys MIDI track, and you can see that this needs to have MIDI coming from channel two. Now the keyboard you can see at the bottom of your screen, this is actually set to channel 12. So when I play this, obviously no sounds are coming through because it's channel 12, but Ableton needs channel two. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change, I'm gonna set up a Bohm MIDI translator that will take the input from this keyboard and make it output in Ableton. So let me show you how to do that. So for many of you, you'll know that MIDI messages, the note MIDI messages actually have two parts to them. There's the note on and the note off. So if you don't have a note off, the note will stay on for as long as that note on message has been started. So. I'm doing two translators here and I'll show you what that looks like a little bit later. So let's look at the first one, note on C4. I'm gonna go through these four sections. So translator options, I've got the name on here, note on C4. Um, it's not active yet, I'll do that in it once I've shown, walked you through this so you can see the difference it makes. So incoming, right, so I want to take a MIDI message note on from channel 12, as I said, my keyboard's on channel 12, the note is going to be C4. Okay, so whenever I hit this note here, C4, this will trigger this translator. However, I need to think about the velocity. I could set a velocity of 127, so it would only trigger when I hit that note at 127. I'm gonna choose any velocity because whichever velocity I play this note with, I want it to trigger. So the final section is set variable to velocity. What this is doing is it's creating a variable OO, and whatever velocity I hit this note with, say I hit this with a 50, that value 50 will be put into this variable OO. So OO will equal 50. So that's basically my incoming 
And finally, let's talk about the outgoing. So I will trigger this, as I already said, by hitting this C note at any velocity. But what will be output from Bohm is a MIDI message, note on, and it's gonna to go to channel two. That's the channel of my Ableton. The note will be C4 or middle C. And finally here, velocity is actually at the value 00. So this, earlier I said if I hit 50, if the velocity I play the note in is at 50, it gets stored in 00. So what this means, whatever velocity I play this note here, it will output that at the same velocity. So that is my note on C4. Um, and as I said, you must have a note off, otherwise your note will stay on forever. And the note off C4 is very similar, it's just note off rather than note on. So let's just test this out. I'm gonna go back into Ableton. So I've unticked those two. Now when I press the C note, nothing happens. Now let's go back into Bohm, tick those, and now I'm gonna press the C note. So hopefully that's coming through and you can hear that. And that's it. So ultimately I've now created a translator that will translate my channel 12 C4 note into a channel two C4 note, which Ableton can recognize. So that's helpful. Let me just show you if I don't have the note off ticked and I only do a note on, this is why it's so important, watch this. I've pressed it and I've taken my hands away and the note is still playing. So that's not ideal. So hopefully you can see that was quite simple. I've used the Bone MIDI translator to take a note from channel 12 and translate it into channel two. Nice and easy. What I'm gonna show you next is how to use the Bone MIDI translator to take one note, but to output three notes. Where this is useful is in MIDI triggering. So let's get into that example now. So we're back in Bohm. So here's my two translators. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy those two translators and paste them below. So I've pasted a note on and note off for E4 and renamed it E4 and pasted two more note on and note off for G4 and they've got identical incoming triggers so they will all be triggered by this C note the only difference by the way in the output is the note that they're outputting so if you listen now so this is where it's really really powerful if you have a number of MIDI triggers let's say 10 MIDI triggers that have all been assigned to a different MIDI note and you want to launch them all at the same time that's really tricky you have to press 10 notes at the same time whereas Bohm can send those 10 notes from pressing just one note so some good examples there if you're getting value out of this video please consider hitting the like button as it will help the video to spread further thanks also I've got a code on the screen now which you can go to the Bohm shop and use as a coupon code to get 20% off the price of Bohm. Anyway, that's all good. But imagine you wanted to convert this whole keyboard from channel 12 to channel two. It's got 88 keys, so you'd need 88 translators on note on and 88 translators on note off. That's not actually that helpful. So I'm gonna show you a technique now where you can change from channel 12 to channel two, the same thing I did, but for the whole keyboard. Check this out. So we're back in Bohm. What I want to do, as I said, is convert this keyboard, which is channel 12, and as you can hear, nothing's coming through. I need to convert it to channel two so able to can read it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these two translators. If we look at the first one here, incoming, this is where you need to get your head around MIDI hexadecimal language. So every single MIDI message can be represented by six characters, which is the MIDI hexadecimal language. The first two characters are quite important. So here you can see I've got 9B, PP, QQ. So the very first character, 9, that represents note on. So 9 always means note on, 8 means note off. The second character, the B, that represents the channel of the MIDI that's going through. So B represents channel 12. So what this is saying is note on channel 12. And then I've got PP and QQ following on. And what that means is the velocity and all of the other parts of the MIDI note are represented and captured in those variables. It's a bit like earlier I used OO. So what this will basically mean is anything with a note on from channel 12 will get sent through. So here, now let's look at the outgoing. So again, MIDI message in raw, and I'm gonna use the hexadecimal code again. And as you can see, I've put nine at the beginning, and remember nine means note on, so this will output a note on. And the second part, as you remember, is the channel. So one means channel two. So I've gone from nine B to nine one, and that means it translates everything from channel 12 into channel two. And you can see the PP and the QQ are those variables. So all the other information I've sent through this keyboard is getting sent straight through. And the only thing I've changed is the channel. So just to prove it, if I untick these, you can see nothing coming through. And if I now tick these, it comes through. So that's all good. 
So that is a simple technique to translate your keyboard from one channel to another. This might be useful if you have an old piece of MIDI hardware that's fixed on one channel and you want to convert it from that channel into another channel. So the Bohm MIDI translator is brilliant at getting you in complete control of your MIDI. Inputs and outputs, fantastic. But there's so much more that it can do. I use it, for example, to control the scenes or the cameras that you see when I'm live streaming. I use a software called OBS and I use hotkeys. So when I use hotkey three, which I'm pressing now, you can see there that it moves to my ceiling camera and hotkey number one takes me back to this. You can use Bohm to take the MIDI messages from Ableton, send them into Bohm and then send them back out to control OBS. So let me give you an example of how that works in Bohm. So I've got these two translators here, scene one simple and scene two simple. Let's look into those. Incoming is a MIDI message note on, on channel 12 and the note is D4 and it will trigger on any velocity and then swallow the message. So it's this note here, D here. Okay, and the outgoing function is control and option one. Now that's the hotkey that gets me to my main camera. And then scene two is triggered by note C4 and takes me control option three, which takes me to my second scene. So check this out. By those two, I can now move to this camera and this camera just by pressing this piano keyboard here. So you could use that with any MIDI controller. If you don't want to buy the Stream Deck or something like that, you can actually use a piece of MIDI hardware to control your cameras. But there's one problem with OBS for using hotkeys. The program itself has to be in the forefront as be the main focus of your computer for those hotkeys to work. So this obviously was a problem for me doing live streams. I need to be able to have the focus of my computer on Ableton or Bohm or something else, not on OBS. And if I can't rely on uh, the MIDI trigger to move the scenes, then I'm in, I'm in trouble. Let's have a look at this one. So I've now got the scene one complex. It's the same note. It's C and this one is D. And let's have a quick look at the incoming. So the incoming is the same pretty much. Now the outgoing, this is Apple script. So this is a bit of a tip if you use Mac. So Apple script is something that allows you to execute code on Mac OS systems like this. So for example, this Apple script here, I can trigger this from my note, as I said earlier, tell application system events, tell process OBS, set frontmost to true. So the problem I talked earlier about the fact that OBS needs to be in focus for um, the hotkey to work has now been solved. I've literally put it through Apple script to be in the front. Um, and then I can then say tell application system events, key code 20 using control down, option down. So that's the same, basically that's the Apple script code for control option one or control option three in my two examples. So this is amazing. Bohm can output Apple script so you can get in complete control of all of your programs within your Mac system. So check it out, I'll do the same thing again. Press note one and that moves me. So OBS wasn't in, in the forefront then, but it still worked. And note two, note one, note two. So it's working really nicely. So I hope you found that useful. Bohm is amazing. For example, I actually have lyrics that I play on my live stream as I'm singing the song and I've got the camera angles changing. So if I'm doing a guitar solo, I can move over to the guitar solo cam and it all happens through a MIDI track that I've programmed into my Ableton setup and that Ableton uh, setup triggers the various camera angles and it all flows through Bohm. Amazing piece of software. Don't forget the coupon code, get you 20% off. Um, but if you're fired up for this video and you want to watch another video of mine where I talk through the process that Elise Tro uses to automate her software using the IAC driver, check it out here.